Tonight, China forbids U.S. antivirus software. Cell phone calls might be banned on airplanes. And a hacker figures out how to break into an airliner's communication system. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 143 for Monday, August 4th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. It's getting tough to be a foreign company in China. China's state-run newspaper People's Daily announced last night via Twitter that the government procurement agency had updated its list of approved security and antivirus software vendors, all five of which were Chinese companies. Two that were missing, Symantec and Russia's Kapersky Lab, which means that some government officials won't be allowed to buy security software from either company. Now, last month, Reuters reported that Symantec was in talks with the government over a ban it issued against the company's data loss prevention software, while the Ministry of Public Security released a statement asking all employees to uninstall the software and halt future purchases. Symantec has released a statement claiming, quote, we're committed to the local government and Chinese customers and have invested significantly in the country by expanding our product development and offering. Back in May, China also banned use of Microsoft's Windows 8 OS. And last week, the country's state administration for industry and commerce launched an antitrust probe of Microsoft as well. Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi has replaced Samsung as the leading smartphone vendor in shipments in China in the second quarter. That's according to figures from market research firm Canalys. Xiaomi led with 14% of the market share, with Samsung, Lenovo, and Yulong all taking 12%. It's a big gain from just a year ago when Xiaomi only had 5% market share. Their devices typically sell for a little more than $100, while Samsung's high-end Galaxy phones typically run over $500. Xiaomi is privately owned, kind of unusual, and sells its phones close to manufacturing cost, makes its profits through services like mobile apps. Mobile payment and point-of-sale company Square has purchased food delivery service Caviar, which the New York Times reports is a $90 million all-stock deal. Square recently launched a feature called Order that allows a user to pay ahead of showing up. A feature called Pickup gives you the ability to order ahead and then pay when you arrive. So, what's next? Sounds like couriers. Caviar is based in major metro areas and focused, at least for now, on high-end restaurants. The company said in a statement, quote, our ultimate vision aligns with Squares to provide local merchants with the best tools to grow and sustain their businesses. Delivery is no doubt an important component of helping a business drive additional revenue and will work hard to create new and exciting features for everyone. Microsoft's first update to Windows Phone 8.1 has begun rolling out to developers, although anybody with a Windows Phone can register to install the update through Microsoft's App Studio program. Update 1 includes a number of improvements to the original 8.1 developer release. A main addition is the introduction of folders for Windows Phone, the ability to select multiple SMS messages for forwarding or deletion, user customizable snooze settings for alarms, and improvements to the live tile for Xbox Music. Windows Phone 8.1 Update 1 brings Cortana to new markets, the UK and China in beta. Australia, Canada, and India can also use Cortana in an alpha form ahead of a rollout to additional markets in the future. On the iOS developer side of things, Apple released iOS 8 Beta 5 for the iPhone and iPad and iPod Touch, which brings updates to iCloud photo storage, health privacy settings, and improvements to the Messages app, thank goodness, among other features and bug fixes. The company also released OS 10 10.10. .10. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yosemite Developer Preview 5 today, which brings performance improvements, bug fixes, and some UI changes. Nothing too crazy. The U.S. Department of Transportation is pursuing the next step in what could be a formal ban on in-flight phone calls. The agency's general counsel, Catherine Thompson, said in a speech last week at the International Aviation Club in Washington. A spokesperson confirmed that the Department of Transportation is developing a notice of proposed proposed rulemaking it'll be uh, published in december and that quote at this point there is no final determination as to what the notice or the final rule will be 
Back in December of last year, the Federal Communications Commission proposed overturning technical rules, barring in-flight cell phone use. Those were designed to prevent interference with ground-based cellular networks, which the FCC said was no longer a concern. Airlines argue that the Transportation Department is overstepping authority and should let carriers decide whether to offer cell phone service, which would require some technology investment. Coming up later in the show, the handbook that Comcast employees use to keep you from canceling and your service is quite a doozy. And up next, I will chat with Ian Thompson from the Register about a hacker who figured out how to break into the communication systems on an airplane and what that might mean. But first, let's thank Personal Capital for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. It's a free and very secure tool that helps solve barriers when it comes to growing your wealth. You would like to grow your wealth, right? Of course you would. Me too. First barrier, it's hard to keep track of where's all your money. Is it in stocks? How many 401ks do you have? Maybe you have a variety of bank accounts and savings accounts and all that stuff. You've got different usernames. You've got different websites and passwords. That's tough. The second, if you have somebody do all of this for you, well, isn't that nice? You're probably paying them too much, though. Personal Capital brings all of your accounts, all of your assets onto one single screen. It is easy to read. That can be accessed on your computer or your phone or your tablet. These are real-time uh, graphs, intuitive graphs. Personal Capital actually announced the integration of an app, an award-winning app with Android Wear that's now available for download in the Google Play App Store. This watch app integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with timely updates on their finances. Truly on the go. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees, how you can reduce those fees, advice on being a better investor. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal capital gives you clarity and transparency to make a better investment decision. So set up your free account right now. Go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN and the number two. Personal capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And thanks to Personal Capital for their support of our show. All right, joining us now is Ian Thompson, reporter over at The Register. You know, Ian, you were on the show just last Thursday. Thanks for coming back so quickly. No, no, always had fun. Always had fun with the show, so happy to be back. All right, well, let's get right into what's going to be a pretty big week in security. Uh, according to Reuters, uh, cybersecurity researcher Ruben Santamarta says he's figured out how to get into communications equipment on passenger jets. That would be via Wi-Fi and in-flight entertainment systems. How did he, how was he able to do that? Well, judging from the preliminary uh, views of the reports, obviously we'll see the presentation later. What he and his team did was take the satellite control software, the firmware, and take it apart. Basically, see what the weaknesses are, see if there's any passwords encrypted in plain, to, uh, sorry, put, in, put there in plain rather than being encrypted. And he appears to have worked out how to get around most of the major satellite control systems by using some tools which have been developed specifically for the job. Okay, well, you know, the, the first question when you hear something like this is, ooh, you know, it's, it's pro probably not a good idea to do this. Is there any real threat to safety of passengers on an airplane, even if this is possible, though? Well, okay. If, first off, you ha we have been seeing some more excitable headlines about this would allow the person to take control of the aircraft. <laughs> That's not going to happen because control systems and the satellite communications for entertainment are entirely separate systems. There are very few crossover points between there. What is concerning, though, is that it seems clear that the satellite control software, much like, say, Windows XP, wasn't really designed with security in, in mind. So it's fairly easy to crack. So I should imagine there's an awful lot of satellite manufacturers who are now giving their software teams a kick and saying, check this out. Is this something that we need to do a major revision of? Now, Senator Marta says he plans on explaining exactly what went into his research later this week at uh, in a session at the Black Hat Conference. What, what happens? Why would this be the method to kind of share the details with the world? Is, is this pretty common to save something like this for Black Hat or DEF CON or hacking conferences? Well, certainly. I mean, Black Hat and DEF CON are the most pre prestigious uh, security conferences out there at this time of the year. 
Um, so it, it is quite usual to explain this stuff. Now, researchers are really quite responsible people. They're not going to say, here's a hole, here's exactly where it is, and here's the cold, here's the, the software to exploit it. What they will do is give just enough information to get people thinking about the topic, get them exploring it on them by themselves. But generally, they will work with the manufacturers of these systems to make sure they're not basically opening up an exploit that anybody can use. So, all right, you're going to be uh, you're going to be at Black Hat yourself. What are some other topics and talks that you're looking forward to or planning to participate in? Well, there's an awful lot of them. I mean, there's there's over a hundred briefings spread over the two wow. the two conferences. I mean, there's some very interesting stuff in terms of Wi-Fi hacking. There looks to be some very there, there are rumors of some serious problems with the 802.11 standard. Uh, automotive hacking is going to be a big thing. We've got a, a couple of very good researchers who have not only looked into how to hack automobiles, but also apparently have developed a device to stop people hacking them, which mm -hmm. is as important to fi as finding the exploits in some regards. And there's some very interesting work on cryptography. It looks as though we may have uh, run into some serious problems with cryptogra uh, cryptography standards. And when it comes down to it, crypto is the whole deal when it comes to security these days. So that could be very enlightening indeed. You know, before I let you go, Ian, I guess I just want to ask, what, what do you think is the next big vulnerability? You mentioned cars. Obviously, cars are getting smarter all the time. But hey, anytime you put enough computers into anything, then people will try to take them apart. What, what do you think is kind of the next frontier as far as what we can gain from uh, uh, conferences like Black Hat and, 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 and knowledge that we're, that we're figuring out. I think, to be honest, we're looking at the, 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 the sort of the nightmare scenario is some way of disrupting the main DNS servers. I mean, there are back, backup mm. DNS servers. And at Black Hat a few years ago, um, a couple of very smart guys had worked out a way to, to muck about with that. And then instead of actually going to Black Hat first, they went to the internet authorities and got those fixes made before they announced the results. But that would be something which would really totally disrupt the, the way that the internet works. And as I say, while there are backup servers, we're not facing a, a sort of disaster movie situation. It would seriously inconvenience everyone in the industry. Ian Thompson reports for The Register, and uh, we'll make sure to have you back after all of these uh, security conferences, and you can tell me if it's the doomsday scenario that I'm hoping that it is isn't. not. Just kidding. Thanks so much for being with us, Ian, and let folks know how they can keep up with your work and uh, what you might be uh, sharing peop uh, with people from these conferences. Certainly. I'll be posting daily on theregister.co.uk, and my Twitter handle is Ian Thompson, so uh, you should be getting regular updates on that as well. Thanks so much for being with us, Ian, and have fun. Thanks for inviting me. All right, finally, if you are a Comcast customer, and I am, the retention department might not have heard of it, but this is where people try and cancel their service. Retention specialists are people that are trained to persuade customers to stay or at least not cancel everything that they're paying Comcast for. Us. Keep a line of service. So how do they do it? A current employee at Comcast who participated in the Comcast Confessions series, which The Verge put together, forwarded The Verge a copy of guidelines for the company that are 20 pages long that are used for evaluating retention specialists. So you've got sections that cover things like taking control and overcoming objections and ending on a positive note. That all seems pretty cut and dry. But also some tricks like if a customer says they're moving and doesn't want to provide a new address, you start asking probing questions because the customer may be planning to move to a competitor. It's fascinating, if a very frustrating read. Oh, Comcast, such good PR lately. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for being here. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's our morning news program tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.